Hi, and welcome to Beetle Dave's Beatles channel. Today's video is episode 11 of my Apple Records album series. So please, come and join me. So hello and a warm welcome to one and all again to Beatle Days Beatles channel today and I really hope I find all you fantastic Beatles people doing really well out there and hopefully you've been finding lots of Beatles goodies out there in the wild. Well the subject for today's showing is episode 11 of my Apple Records album series and of course it's the first Apple album by John Taverner entitled The Whale. And it was actually Ringo that brought John Taverner to be signed to Apple's ever-growing diverse label roster. But you know, this is exactly why Apple Records has that appeal 55 years later. So in this series, I've decided to show each album in release date order, as well as showing any additional USA or reissue pressings. And of course, I'm gonna be showing plenty of eight tracks as well. So obviously though, I won't be showing any solo Beatles albums, just the other artists that were signed to the Apple label. Okay then, right now, it's time for something completely different. It's... Yeah. So yes, welcome to Ask Beatle Dave, where I'll be answering your questions that you have about anything Beatles related. Maybe about anything that I've shown or haven't shown. Maybe about the guy's solo careers or solo films or promo films. Just about anything you want to ask and I'll endeavour to answer it right here. So today's question then is from Matthew Buzzle. How you doing Matthew? I hope you're well my friend. And he asks, Beatle Dave. Wings Over America is a really important record for me. It really helped me send me on my Beatles journey. Which final pressing do you consider to be the best sounding? Well, firstly, thanks for the question, Matthew. And I always thought actually that the original mix was just a bit mushy in the mids. You know, probably due to the fact that it's a live recording. So really then, it's a toss up between the original UK version from 1976 or the black vinyl or even the colored vinyl versions from 2019. And I do feel actually that the 2019 version sounds a lot more crisp than the original. So I'm guessing obviously it's been cleaned up and EQ'd slightly. I mean the colour vinyl version sounds just as good as the black vinyl. So I mean either one of those two is absolutely superb. So Matthew, I really hope that answers that question for you. And guys, if you want to contribute to Ask Beatle Dave, just send me a question in the comments and I'll include it in a future episode. It's that simple. So come on, please please me by getting involved and ask me some super questions. Okay now, so we're gonna be moving on. It's time for... I call your name. So yes, we're on to them fabulous old shout outs and it's a great big Beatle Dave hi to Apple Man, FBT, how you doing? Iron Knight, Right Man, Steve Wirtz, Invisible Ray, Hiya Ray, Michael Platt, and Peter X's co-music room. So that's a great big hi to you guys from yours truly, Beatle Dave. So on to the main event then today, guys, and it's episode 11 of my Apple Records album series, and it's the John Taverner LP, The Whale. So please come and join me. The Whale by John Taverner was released by Apple Records on the 25th of September 1970, with the USA released nearly two months later on the 15th of November. Being one of Taverner's earliest works, The Whale is based on the story of Jonah and the Whale and has aptly been described as both a dramatic cantata and a biblical fantasy. Although it was Ringo Starr who became Taverner's main contact at Apple and was responsible for getting the whale onto disc, it was in fact John Lennon who took the first initiative and provided the composer with an introduction to Apple. Performed by the London Sinfonietta with David Atherton as conductor, it was premiered at the Queen Elizabeth Hall on the 24th of January 1968 and was performed once again at a proms concert on the 1st of August 1969 with the same orchestra and conductor. 
The whale was finally recorded in the St John Evangelist Church, Islington, London, where Ringo Starr, who was present at the entire recording, lent a hand with the percussive instruments and generally joined in when needed. The recording incorporated orchestra, chorus, spoken word, megaphones, plain song, jazz, football rattles, stamping and rakish brass, it was all woven with Taverner's peculiar measured reverence. For its opening sequence, Taverner employed Alva Liddell, the BBC radio newsreader who is probably best remembered for announcing the outbreak of World War II. The original Apple Records recording was re-released with a different cover in 1977 on Ringo Starr's label, Ringo Records. But once again, the album did not chart, although it has enjoyed enduring success through the years. So let's take a look. So here it is then, John Taverner's The Whale, released in the UK on the 25th of September 1970 on Apple Records' Sapcore 15. So on to the cover then which is not laminated, it's completely matte finished. So you've got the whale with, of course, John Taverner and the picture of the whale, obviously based on Jonah and the whale, a biblical story. It's in great condition, this one, really nice. On the reverse there, of course, you've got John Taverner. Got some information on the left-hand side there about John Taverner. David Atherton, obviously, who's the conductor and the London Sinfianetta Chamber Orchestra as well, details there. And then at the bottom there, we've got that Apple logo. And of course on this sleeve, it's a gatefold sleeve, got some more illustrations. The illustration actually a courtesy of the National Maritime Museum. And cover design and photography is by Jean Mahan and Richard Delelio. But this great, great gatefold this, really nice. And of course on the right hand side there, you've got more information about the actual recording itself. But it's all fabulous stuff. Let's take a look at that spine of course. And the actual spine is more towards the front of the cover, actually, than it is actually on the spine. Slightly off-centre. So we've got the inner sleeve then, which is a patent number sleeve at the bottom left. And, of course, made in England on the bottom right. It's in fabulous shape. Great stuff. So on to the fabulous vinyl then. Really nice heavyweight Apple Records vinyl. It's in beautiful condition. I played this recently. I mean, it's not everyone's cup of tea, but it's certainly something diverse and very, very different. You know, obviously the Apple Records being very diverse. So many different styles on the Apple Records label. The actual recording was produced by Michael Bremner, and it was recorded by BBC Transcription Services on July the 22nd to the 24th, 1970, obviously at a church in Islington. So we've got there the Apple Records on the perimeter rim with the whale above the centre hole. Of course on the left there we've got 33 and a third manufactured in the UK and side one with on the right being stereo you've got Sapcore 15 and the P1970. With at the bottom we've got the whale and we've got a list of everybody involved in the recording. We've got the London Sinfonietta Orchestra of course with David Atherton who's the conductor. And then we've got Anna Reynolds, who's the mezzo-soprano, Raymond Herenix, who's the baritone, Alvar Liddell, who's the speaker, and then, of course, we've got John Taverner himself, who's organ and Hammond organ. What a super-looking vinyl, this one. Absolutely beautiful. Of course, the matrix on side one is Sapcore 15 A-1U. So we're going to flip that over then. It's the second side. Once again there, of course, you've got the Apple Records around the perimeter rim with the whale above the centre hole. And on the left there, we've got the 33 and a third, manufactured in the UK and side two, with on the right stereo, Sapcore 15 and P1970. With the whale concluded, and of course, all the guys involved at the bottom of the label there. And then we've got the matrix on side two then, which is Sapcore 15 B-1U. And this is absolutely pristine condition, really beautiful, and it sounds really, really fabulous. So on to the USA version then of John Taverner's The Whale, released nearly two months after the UK version on the 15th of November 1970 on Apple Records, catalogue number SMAS3369. So we've got a virtually sealed version here. 
Obviously at the top there you've got factory sealed for your protection and we've got a price tag of $23.10. Did actually buy this many, many years ago. Of course we've got the whale there and the little picture illustration and of course John Tavener. There's a little section of shrink just missing there but it's in pretty good shape. Let's flip that over. Once again it's exactly like the UK version there with the picture of John Tavener on the back and all the information on the left. A little bit of... Uh, shrink wrap missing here on the bottom as well but of course bottom left of course you've got that apple records logo and manufactured by apple records inc 1700 broadway in new york and of course it's abkco managed company right at the bottom there alan klein's company and then we've got the spine of course a nice thick spine the whale and of course you've got apple and the catalog number so on to a UK reissue of The Whale then by John Tavener, which was released in September 1977. It's released on Ringo Records, which is obviously Ringo Starr's little record label. Catalogue number 232010. So on to the reissue cover then. And as you can see, it's vastly different than the original illustrated whale. So you've got John Tavener, the whale. And of course, a great big photo of a whale there, who is just going beneath the surface. Still looks great though, but it's very, very different than the original. And on the reverse there, of course, you've got all the same details you would have got on the original one with the London Sinfonietta Orchestra, the conductor David Atherton, Anna Reynolds, Raymond or Raymond Henrenix, Alvar Liddell and John Tavener with all the information about the actual recording. And you've got a picture of John Tavener there as he would have been about 1977. Of course, this was released by Ringo Records, which I believe was also a subsidiary of Polydor. And then we got that spine, of course. So you've got John Tavener, the whale, and of course the catalogue number. So onto the inner sleeve then, which is a Polydor one, of course, with the plastic on the inside. Not always great for your records. And of course, this is slightly toned as well around the outside, probably due to the glue they use on the plastic. But certainly keep that away from your records. Never put the uh, plastic near your, your vinyl. So on to the fabulous vinyl then. Sounds really great this one. You've got the same image as what you've got on the front sleeve there with the whale there. Just going into the water. I'm not entirely sure if there should be some text on this particular label. But um, I'll have to see if I can search that out. But you've got a matrix on this side which proves it's side 1. Which is 2320104A. Dash one, obviously being the A side. So we're going to flip that over then. Got a lot of text on this side though. Of course you've got Ringo Records right at the top with the whale below that. And on the left there you've got 33 and a third with the P1970 on the left. And then stereo on the right with the catalogue number. And below the centre hole there you've got the whale and of course you've got all the players there below that. With the matrix on this side being 2320. 104B1. Fabulous stuff. So on to another UK reissue then of John Taverner's The Whale. And this was part of the Apple Records reissue campaign, which was released with several other albums such as No Dice, Earth Song, The Ivies and Doris Troy. And they was all released on the 30th of June 1992 on Apple Records catalogue number SAPCore 15. And there's also a barcode which is 07777 9849710. So onto the sleeve then. Exactly like the original one. It's not laminated, but there is a slight sheen on it. You've got a little price sticker there actually from Virgin Megastores when I brought it for £9.79. Absolute bargain now because these are really difficult to get hold of. So you've got the whale there, of course, you've got the illustration and John Tavener. And on the back, once again, exactly like the original there, with all the text on the left. John Tavener there on the right with the barcode printed in the UK, top right there. And then on bottom left, originally released in 1970, digitally remastered with the Apple logo there and some more information with EMI Records Limited as well. And then we've got that fabulous illustration there, replicated exactly, just like the original, with all the same information there on the right-hand side of the gatefold. Fabulous stuff. Let's take a look at that spine then. Nice thick spine. 
John Taverner the Whale, and you've got the barcode at the bottom there. So we've got a printed inner sleeve then with this particular release. It's a little bit flimsy, but at least we've got some sort of printed inner. We've got Sapcor 15 there, John Taverner the Whale, side one, part one, and part two. Of course, the album only runs for about 30 minutes, which is a very, very short album, really. And then we've got plenty more information there with that Apple logo once again. Of course, we've got details from Ron Fermanac as well, and EMI Records, digitally remastered. And then we've got a little essay there from Andy Davis. Great stuff. So on to the vinyl then. And actually, the particular label um, on this particular issue reminds me of a sort of German-type label, actually. It does look like a German release one, or certainly a European. So, of course, you've got John Taverner, the whale there, on the left-hand side, with part one. And then on the right there, we've got 33 and a third with Sapcore 15 and side one on the right there. It's in really great shape, this really nice. Sounds really great as well. And the matrix on this side then is 79849711 A1. So we're going to flip that over then. That's a better looking label, that one. That's much better. So, of course, on the left there, you've got John Taverner, the whale, and the whale part two. With 33 and a third and Sapcore 15 with side two and stereo right at the bottom, manufactured in the UK. With the matrix on side two being 79849711 B1. But once again, these are getting so hard to find, these particular issues, really hard to find. So thank you all once again for tuning in today, guys. And I really hope you've enjoyed seeing those fabulous John Taverner The Whale LPs that I've got from my collection. And don't forget, as always, I really appreciate any comments or communication I get from any of you Beatles people. And I'll always endeavour to come back to you just as soon as I can. So the next Apple Records album series episode then, we'll be back again next time with the second Badfinger album on Apple. And it's the excellent No Dice LP. So next week then, I'm going to be showing Ringo Starr's Apple 45s from 1971 to 1975 and what a fine bunch of singles from Ringo. So please make sure you're here in two weeks, same Beatles time, same Beatles channel. So anyway, as always, if you enjoy what I'm doing, why not give us a like, subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any future videos. This is Beatle Dave signing off. Beatles, Beatles channel.